Mr. Scott Smith. I'm the founder and inventor of Opflex Technology. Scott's been to every major oil spill in the last 10 years. He's been to so many uh, oil spills that he's earned the nickname the Toxic Avenger. He's a superhero. <laughs>
that's what our core element is, sustainability without compromise. And, and you're going to see a lot of examples of that today. Talk about why this is a little personal to me. I've been in over 60 disasters, starting with my own, with my factory that was wiped out in basically most of my life and my business in 2006 in oil contaminated floodwaters. And I became a little obsessed with oil and water, put everything on the line, rebuilt the business. Well, and since then, I started going to disasters. And you hear an expression out there that real world disasters are my laboratory. I proved the technology out in the real world. So in May of 2020, my daughter, frontline worker, social services director, nursing home on Cape Cod, full PPE gear every day, N95 mask, along with over half of the staff, got a severe case of COVID. So I approached this just like it was the 61st disaster, another environmental disaster. And what I do is I work with experts. So I reached out and I found Daryl Hicks, one of the leading surface disinfection experts. I thought I'd seen it all <laughs> in all the disasters, in testing reports, but he taught me something about quat binding and the fact that paper towels deactivate disinfectant. Many of the frontline workers, not just at my daughter's nursing home, are being infected. You don't necessarily read about it, but yes, masks are important. Yes, this virus gets transmitted by droplets in the air, but surfaces are a real problem. And you talk about sustainability without compromise, and I get it. Nursing homes, hospitals, grocery stores, restaurants, where I live in Cape Cod, said, so, well, we really can't afford to disinfect properly and follow the CDC EPA regulations. We kind of just use the paper towels to, for the public, for the public perception. To me, that needs to be challenged. Now, we hear a lot about the CDC. Would, any, would this surprise anybody to know that this right on the CDC web, website, there's something called the FIFRA Act of 1947, the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. It's a violation of federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. These disinfectants, the minute you combine them with paper towels or cotton rags, it deactivates the disinfectant and it goes off label. And very simple, cotton rags and paper towels have a negative ionic charge. Disinfectant's positive. They cancel each other out. And we'll get to this material, the biofoam, has a neutral, it does not have an ionic charge. That's why it can carry the disinfectant with its surface area and substantially lower the risk of surface contamination. And this presentation and the appendix will be available. Our booth is right behind us. Uh, and this is available to anybody that wants it in detail. And we're, I've designed this in a way that you can simply qu click on the links. Like I said, this is about science you can trust. It's not political. So that what is quat binding and why it must be prevented, you click on that, and that'll go into all the science and the details that you need. So what I learned from my personal experience, I'm used to going into environmental disasters where you have to test the product, go to all these labs, wait two weeks uh, for results. I'm still blown away after going on for a year that I talked to Daryl Hicks. And you can buy these quad strips from Amazon for like $8. So I started going into grocery stores, restaurants, local places and doing this. And if you're below 200, all that, you know, in the, again, the scientific links can explain all the details, but right there, look at that quote, uh, the quat disinfectant is off label and in violation of federal law. So I started testing and mapping out all these places. Again, we're in this to educate people, uh, not get people in trouble because they sim most of the time they simply don't know. It's all about education. And I couldn't find any grocery store, restaurant, hospital, nursing home, every place I visited not just on Cape Cod, but everywhere, that was in compliance. And we're living in an environment where we have all these mandates, but no one has paid attention to the existing law. I mean, is anybody here surprised by this? So then I reached out 
to CSIRO. It's the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, the Australian government. This came out in October, and there you have a link. COVID-19 causing virus can survive 28 days on surfaces. These are the different temperatures and humidities. So you think about a cold, dark nursing home and why it was spreading. And I will tell you, you know, having my daughter not just get COVID, but be the social services director, it profoundly affected me. And I'm going to be very passionate about this for the rest of my life. That her patients that were dying alone, family members, couldn't be at peace. Totally unacceptable. And I will be on a mission for the rest of my life because of the spread of COVID. And you think about that. It's not just Massachusetts and New York with all these nursing home deaths. Mapping the route of infection. Even with our masks on, we touch, you touch your face between 15 and 20 times an hour. So again, back to the Delta variant, a thousand times more infectious. Droplets fall into gravity, touching your face and, and, and spreading. So right here at the ASD show, I took this, you know, ASD, face mask meeting CDC guidelines. Well, ASD is doing, going, doing a great job, great lengths to, to protect our safety. But this is just another example of why the public needs more education. Uh, and all the people at ASD have been great in educating them. And, the, you know, we just had two guys carrying the sign stop by our booth and went through the demo with them and all this. And, uh, it, again, it's all about education. Published research largely ignored in the United States. Droplet evaporation residue, how it spreads. I've talked to all the scientists. Droplets do not disappear with evaporation. More than 24 hours. Infectious for prolonged durations after deposition. Now, maybe we just need to get kindergartners, first graders, third graders involved. Maybe that will spark the mass education we need to do to help the public. Because so far, it really hasn't happened. So then I went into my kitchen when all this was going on and had the baseline disinfectant without getting into all the detailed science, 800, 800 to 1,000 ppm. So the paper towel brought it down to 100 the minute it hit the paper towel. Now, the biofoam, the open cell foam infused with this did not deactivate the disinfectant at all. Again, simple science, science you can trust. In 2002, this same material was approved by the FDA and the US military as a medical device. And the reason why, it gets infused with lotion. And if there is a sarin gas attack or a chemical attack, you put it on your skin and it deactivates. No other material would work because it had an ionic charge and other materials deactivated the lotion. Well, it is mind boggling to me that here we are 20 years later, 20 years later, and this material I invented for a different application for medical, for the same reason the FDA approved it and the military approved it and used it, for the same reason it doesn't deactivate disinfectant to infuse surfaces. And I don't have enough time to get into all the details. In 2006, an oil contaminated flood wiped out my factory, my manufacturing facility, and I realized there was no other technology. The white booms and sorbents weren't working. This was sitting in the corner and was absorbing all the oil. And that's how I discovered it. So then I became very passionate about cleaning up oil when in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and that's the connection. So this material led to the oil, which led to the other ones, and we'll talk about that in detail. In 2003, this is an FDA press release, link right at the bottom, talked about the Food and Drug Administration. So this is all what I talk, again, science you can trust. Concept of infusing the open cell foam to neutralize exposure to dangerous chemicals and pathogens is not new. And in many ways, you know, this, 
a proven technology that was adapted in the middle of a crisis because of what I learned from my daughter, a frontline worker, getting infected with a severe case of COVID. Get a little bit into the background. BP endorsed the open cell foam in 2010. I went into the Gulf with a duffel bag full of foam. I think it was an iPhone 2 at the time, threw it to a captain on a boat, said, I'm happy to take your money, 40,000 people before you. And he started taking pictures and turned white and said, I can't believe this. So I put an iPhone video out and I sent it to some local politicians. And then the next day I get a phone call from BP saying, can you get to the command center? And then it, this ended up being adopted in 300 mil, miles of shoreline deployment, reusable, pull the oil out of the water, deployed by BP, endorsed by BP. And there you can see the conventional white polypropylene, single-use plastic, and then the reusable open cell foam. Same material we're looking at here. You can see how it attracts the oil. And again, the science is simple. There's no ionic charge. All these contaminants, uh, pathogens, and, a and, and oil and chemicals and algae toxins all get attracted at the molecular level. And this open cell foam has very high surface area. So if you want contaminants, whether pathogens or oil, you want to attract it at the molecular level, and you want to hit it with as much surface area as possible. BP published this. It's the same eelgrass that now gets used for wastewater and a variety of other applications. Now, here's another mind-boggling story. Dali in China, after BP, I get called over. There's a pipeline spill. Dali in China, a little north of Wuhan. If somebody would have told me 10 years ago that I'd be standing here today in the same material that was a little north of Wuhan that pulled that oil out of the water, had a place in pathogen mitigation, including COVID, MRSA, C. diff, and I could go on and on, I, you know, it's, 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 it's mind-boggling even though I've lived it. And a story about that, I mean, I was over in China with a crew of people and I had boots on that were probably half the size, cram, so it was, a, I was, it was a little tough to walk for the week after deploying the stuff in those boots. They did not have my shoe size. And also, uh, you know, in, in China, you, you learn you have to keep good balance or you're gonna go into a toxic mess. This technology, the biofoam, will absorb the pathogens, and then the pathogens get killed with the infused disinfectant. Costa Concordia, Italy, 2012. What a lot of people don't know, I was contacted by the Italian Coast Guard. Each cruise ship carries an average of 7,000 to 10,000 gallons of olive oil. Harmless to us. In Giulio, Italy, where it's a sanctuary, that oil sits on the surface, blocks the sunlight, literally chokes off the fish. And this is meeting, working with the Italian Coast Guard, deploying the product. And this is the first olive oil demonstration in Italy with the Associated Press. This ended up on the national television in Italy and in the US at the time. And that same olive oil demonstration is going on at our booth right behind you to illustrate how this works. This is a demo of how the patented open cell biofoam works whether it's oil, pathogens in the air, on surfaces, in water, or any other chemical contaminant, it absorbs it like a magnet and repels clear water. If you want to get contaminants out of the air, out of the water, off surfaces, you need to attract the contaminants like a magnet, and you need lots of surface area, hence the open cells. And to illustrate this, we're going to use olive oil. Olive oil behaves the same in water as motor oil or crude oil. And again, this can be contaminants, this could be bacteria and shellfish beds. And you take the open cell foam, expose it to the water, If you look closely on this, 
you can see the water. See the water being repelled, it's beating up on top. That's a key thing because the biofilm is naturally antimicrobial. It's called hydrophobic. It repels the water. That's why if it's in the BioShield masks or the sponges we have for disinfection and cleaning, there's never a smell because it repels the water. And this illustrates how we wring it out and reuse it. You can see the water coming out. And this is reused, can be reused over and over again. And there you have it. We use it over and over again. Sustainability without compromise. So, I get an email after this goes on television with olive oil from a wastewater facility in Philadelphia. They were being fined about 30,000 a month. Well, they turned that into a cost center that was damaging the environment into a, a profit center by reusing. And this is the same material in, a, in the form of a, a filter bag that filters out the oil. And you talk about science you can trust, the EPA was finding them. They took the oil down from 1,120 parts per million to 46. Stopped the fines and reusing it in one filter bag would last three to four months. I've been criticized by some prior partnerships that, Scott, your material's too durable and reusable. And I'm like, well, you either believe in sustainability or you don't. Hence, that's why I came up with sustainability without compromise. And they started squeezing out and reselling it for motor oil and other applications. And then this is an example of the laboratory. My laboratory is the real world, in real world disasters, starting with my own. I had no idea. Total suspended solids, biological oxygen demanders. I start getting these calls, our third party tests. Scott, do you know what you have? It's reducing all these. So 96% reduction in oil in Greece, 82% in suspended solids and biological oxygen. That, that's why I talk about science you can trust. Very important in today's society in which we live. And this is the Philadelphia Commercial Laundry, and we're very active now, you know, all over the Gulf of Mexico and many other places. Patents, this uh, first patent is actually publishing and issuing on September 7th. And what makes this unique is my patents are based on real world disasters, 60 disasters, third-party data everywhere. Again, if anybody wants all this detailed information, just stop by our booth, uh, get my email, happy to follow up with you. And the basis for my technology and my patents is my laboratory, which is the real world. I don't even have all the facility, all the places on here. But every single one of those dots, I can show you what was deployed, I can show you third-party validation, I can show you the scientists I collaborated with. And this is a, an algae patent. Uh, you know, before COVID, again, I had no idea that my technology was going to work for removal of algae and toxins. Uh, I got a phone call from Florida from someone I'd met, and she said, I said, I don't know, I'll come down and try it. Put it in the water. All the, we sent it off to the Florida third party lab. All of a sudden, my phone's calling scientists, and you, I can't believe you absorbed and you removed all these microcystin toxins, and on and on and on. And there, that's Toledo, Ohio, 2014, one of the initial deployments in the algae. This is after I got a phone call, and I had no idea if it would work in the, going into the real world. And all of a sudden, the media's calling and crawling on the ground, and all this data is submitted. You can read it in the uh, public patent filings if you want to know more. Kern County, California, where they have almonds, irrigation water, they, where uh, oil-contaminated water is used. Um, to irrigate crops, went out there, diagnosed things. Uh, that is in a hot oil pit, and uh, had that wooden plank given way, I wouldn't be standing here. So that's one of the more interesting things that I've done. And this is the ability to diagnose the results, whether it's pathogens on surfaces bringing it back or anything that your companies are doing, we can actually, part of the patented technology, the ability to cut this material off, send it to a lab, and it will tell you exactly what's in there and how much is concentrated. <laughs> this is from a Bakken oil train explosion <laughs> in uh, 
dilution is not the solution to pollution. Well, what does that have to do with me doing here? Well, it has everything to do with it. How does this apply to infectious COVID droplets and surfaces? For example, if we're gonna create a sustainable world, dilution is solution to pollution is unacceptable. Just as we're using the paper towels with the disinfectant, it really doesn't work on the surfaces. It's just for appearance to calm the public. That's the analogy there. And this is in the Bakken oil fields in North Dakota. And this is the material absorbing the oil that may, could be pathogens. Now, Bermuda, a lot of people go to Bermuda for vacation. I go to Bermuda to crawl around storm drains and stop the contamination. And Bermuda, people go for the pink sand beaches. I go for the pink algae and try to help clean it up. This is BP, status quo of, you know, the guy I work with at BP. BP was great, they endorsed it. Status quo of inaction, no longer sustainable. Think about these, these bins uh, just filling full of material. Single-use plastics that don't biodegrade going to landfills, not getting the oil out of the water. Now, we're working on some videos right now. Single-use paper towels filling dumpsters. Filling. Think about all the carbon being used when you're not even disinfecting. United States Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, third-party validation. And this is uh, an article they did in 2019 sustainable absorbent products to protect waterways. And that's in the appendix uh, to this presentation with all the details and all the background. Now, how does this all tie together? Now we're talking about high surface area, open cell foam mitts and sponges. That's so what I talk about. To me, it's very important in today's environment to establish science you can trust. This same material is hydrophobic. It repels water. It means it's naturally antimicrobial without any chemicals. What this means is people have started purchasing this since COVID and people are throwing out cellulose sponges. It'll never smell. You can do your dishes. And there's something else. You use far less soap. Soap going down a drain is not good. It's less soap you use because it doesn't absorb the soap. It releases it because it repels water. There's no ionic charge. So we're really realizing more and more applications. And you can use this with any EPA registered disinfectant. Masks. The paper masks you see can be bacteria factories. They're not hydrophobic. Well, we repel water and this. You see it's all about surface area. Because of this surface area, this is equivalent to over 30 of the paper masks. And I'm going to get <clears throat> now to the, uh, the high IQ disinfectant. We went to ASD Dallas and it's fundamentally changed the company's path because we met somebody that led to now combining forces with a non-toxic, non-chemical based disinfectant. So you can spray this, you can wash it, you can reuse it. Think about all the single use paper masks now that are going to landfills every day. Talk about sustainability without compromise. Best available technology to protect your health, best available technology to protect the environment, sustainability without compromise. And I can tell I'm actively involved in, in algae spills, and you can actually put this in the refrigerator, and it's a way to stay cool because there are a lot of pathogens in the air with, with a lot of the work I do. And, you know, that's my daughter when I came out with these masks. And the other thing that we realized, you know, everyone that has kids should be very concerned. The science is out there. Direct inhalation of nanofibers into lungs with masks, with nanotechnology. P people in the audience familiar with asbestos? Asbestos, when it came out, next grade thing, won't compromise your health. Well, I'm talking to a lot of scientists that are too scared to talk about it. Think about five, 10, 15 year old kids, 15, 20 years from now, inhaling these nano nanofibers. It is a science fact that these nanofibers are a risk for cancer. Could this be the next asbestos? I hope not. But it's sure, you know, they say history always repeats itself. History just may be repeating itself here with these nanofiber masks. Again, you can see our booth behind us, the flea and tick spray for dogs, the veg effects for vegetables. Um, and we have surface cleaner too, where you can infuse. Again, non-toxic water-based. And here's the thing, this is a report. 
This is from an EPA lab. We tested this water that is hydrogen ions. It's harmless to humans, but if you're unicellular, if you're a virus, you're a bacteria, a pathogen, it kills you with physics, not chemistry. Think of the hydrogen ions and the, the unicellular virus or bacteria. Like, Everyone is required to wear a mask at all times, regardless be of the vaccination status. Thank you for your cooperation. Maybe you should say everyone should be properly disinfecting according to the CDC guidelines. Um, so uh, uh, this is certified as drinking water. And the reason why, we're talking about killing viruses like a balloon, so you have like paper clips inside. So what happens is the hydrogen ions outside pull the paper clips through basically and lyse the cells and destroy, and destroy the virus and pathogens. And it's certified as drinking water. And it's used as, uh, it, it's very similar to the pH 11. And I love with bad garlic and onion breath. It's better than mints. And here's the pH, lemon juice, and the pH of this is right around two. And for those of you in the science, it's basically a high, it's just hydrogen. There's no chemicals, not gonna cause asthma, not gonna cause cancer. You know, it's not like bleach, has no shelf life. And these are the various, uh, what we've introduced. Again, the booth is right behind us. flea and tick spray. And this is July 2021, Martha's Vineyard. Called me over, looked at this. They have a lot, of, a lot of different problems with shellfish beds. And they read about, again, after ASD Dallas, the company completely transformed. There was a press release out. I became, you know, chief sustainability officer, public company, Apex BioCleanse. They reached out and said, Scott, we know we've been working with you for years for oil and everything. We don't want to shut the shellfish beds down. What can we do? So I started deploying and again, testing the water. Um, that's a storm drain. Sometimes it gets interesting because if a lot of people start uh, discharging water, dumping things down the drain, it can get a little interesting. Uh, and this is the first time I'm talking about this publicly. We now are working with major suppliers, shrimp, shellfish, uh, all over the Gulf and on Martha's Vineyard. And we have videos and much more documentation that just what that says, the infused biofoam killed fecal coliform, all of it. We took real world pond water from Tajmu Lake on Martha's Vineyard and it worked. Again, a real lab experiment in the Tisbury water treatment plant, the third party data. So. Now we're scaling up, figuring out how to deploy that on a large scale. But the ability to kill bad germs with a sustainable, non-toxic, non-chemical based material is really good. The way I kind of summarize this, it's simple. You can't remove contaminants from water, air, or surfaces if you don't make contact with the contaminants. You can't kill pathogens if you don't make contact with, a, with active disinfectant. And we also have a link to a YouTube place that lists the recent inter, uh, media interviews. And also I've got one last video here. And before that, I mean, this presentation is dedicated to all frontline workers in all disasters, whether COVID, oil spills, toxic algae. We got a lot of great frontline workers out there and we need to keep educating people and bringing people together. And you can find out more to go into gobiofoam.com. Now this is a video we made right at, with, with the high IQ and illustrates, this is my dog Oliver that I walk in the woods and flea and tick spray and he doesn't like chemicals or smells. Sustainability without compromise with high IQ water and biofoam. Non-toxic pet spray. After you take your dog for a walk in the woods that has an algae contaminated pond, you scrub him down. It's non-toxic, high IQ water with biofoam. So you're infusing it in the biofoam. And you reuse this wipe over and over again instead of single use plastic or single use paper towels that go to our landfills, it's used over and over again. So maximum protection for your pets and your family and sustainability. Sustainability without compromise.
thanks to high IQ water and biofoam. Now I want to make one comment about Oliver. He's a rescue dog. He was born under the floorboards of Texarkana in an abandoned house in a very difficult environment. And I myself have something in common with Oliver. I'm a rescue human. I was under the floorboards, wiped out in disasters. No, and I want to, I wouldn't be standing here if I don't have the incredible gratitude. And we live in a society where you need, you never know what's going on in someone's life, you know? And you can only get through it if you have great people around you. And, you know, I wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for, I'll use their first names, Mark, Betty, Karen, Glenn, Aton, Sky, Ernie, Jeff. You know who you all are. And the reason I'm here to try to help bring people together is I wouldn't be standing here and I may not even be alive if, if it weren't for these people. And if I left someone's name off, I apologize. Thank you.